Are you looking for a hair pick-me-up? then you need Glaze Super Gloss. Your hair will be glossy, soft, and vibrant. You can choose from 10 color matching shades or just go for the sheer glow, which is gentle enough to use in place of your conditioner. In only 10 minutes, you'll have the best hair of your life. There's no sulfates or parabens in any of Glaze products, and you can recycle your last bottle when you're ready for a new one. Hit pause right now and go to glazehair.co and use promo code MONICA15 to get 15% off the best hair of your life. That's glazehair.co and promo code MONICA15. Well, Monica, today I feel like a cheater because the prep for this particular episode was so dang easy. It was, wasn't it? (laughs) Yeah. So we basically just get to make a list of things that we really enjoy and then share them with our friends. I know. I just had to look at my phone. I was like, this is awesome. Easiest show prep ever. Some shows have way more prep and some have less. And this is probably the least I've ever done. So today is basically just a list of our true crime benches, kind of like a resource where you're encyclopedia today of what the two Monicas love to listen to or watch for true crime. Monica, I want to take a little time to talk about how each one of us got into true crime. I would say that between the two of us, I think that you're probably more immersed into it and possibly have a longer history. What do you think? I I would agree. Uh, You were definitely doing the true crime thing long before I was, or even before I think it really had an uptick of late, probably in the last 18 months or so, it's just really come on strong. Oh, I would say in the past, I think I was like ever. Every kid in the 80s and 90s, and I watched Unsolved Mysteries. You may be able to help solve a mystery. Did you watch that? Yeah. Oh, definitely. And that music was terrifying. It was the kind of thing that could keep me up at night if it was just the right episode. The intro. Mostly because of the music. The intro music is all it takes. If you think about the movie Halloween music. And if you think about Unsolved Mysteries, they're both using that same piano key, I swear, which is just creepy. I was convinced, per usual, as as time goes on, I see this as a pattern in my life, convinced that I was going to be a victim of one of these crazy Unsolved Mysteries, having lived in the middle of the nowhere. Right. So true story though, as I've brought up before, but would like to bring up again, since we're doing true crime and one of the true crime documentaries that swept the nation was the Tiger King. And I lived next to a Tiger King. I lived next to a man who had a tiger and two tie-ons. So I just want to say that sometimes I feel like all of my being scared of everything, you know, there's a little bit to it. Mm -hmm. I just need to process it as an adult on a podcast with everybody. You know what? (laughs) That's saving me a hundred dollars an hour. (laughs) Sometimes I feel like this is your therapy. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it kind of is. Welcome, everyone. You can go ahead and invoice me later. (laughs) (laughs) So Unsolved Mysteries, like every single kid in the 80s and the 90s, I didn't do anything but that at that time. What about you when you were a kid, when you were a kid and a teenager? What what were you into? Oh, my gosh. So my mom and I started watching Dateline 30 years ago. Whoa. You know, so I was basically 11. I cannot imagine watching Dateline with Lillian. This is crazy. Yeah. We would watch Dateline and Dateline wasn't always like murder, but it was a lot. And Mm -hmm. we'd also watch law and 
and Order. We started watching that its inaugural year and, you know, it's ripped from the headlines. Yeah. So that's how it got started. So, you know, I was 11, 12 years old and that was our Friday night. <laughs> which seems a little disturbing, but we still love it. So that's our quality time together. When she comes to visit, I'll be like, mom, have you seen this? Have you seen that? She'll say oh, no. And we'll watch it together. Is it's always the, murder. <laughs> yeah. I love it. There is something that I used to watch and I don't know how I came across these because we didn't get cable until later. So best way I can describe it just from memory is like, like a lifetime movie specials. Oh and yeah. So I think that they used to have some of those on regular TV, the regular TV stations. And I would always, always watch them. And they were always about some weird domestic violence or yes. stalker. And I was like obsessed with them, much like you were with soap operas. I feel like that was more <laughs> how I was with these like weird lifetime movie style documentary, not documentaries, but they were. Yeah, they're ripped. They're based on true stories. Yes, they're based true on true stories. Yeah. And two of them have stuck with me my entire life. I don't need to get into which ones they are, but they seriously are actually three seared into my brain. Uh, we didn't have cable either, which is why we got started with Dateline. 2020 even used to have some, you know, real life, true crime stories and law and order. Did you ever read true crime books when you were younger? No, I didn't. I didn't get into the true crime novels until my twenties. And okay. I can even remember the first one, which I'll go into later. But when I was pregnant, so I started reading true crime books in my 20s, but then I picked it back up again when Paul and I started dating and I, <laughs> I would lay on the couch while he watched football and read all about serial killers. It makes me wonder why he thought it was so odd. While I had insomnia during pregnancy, I would go downstairs and I would binge true crime. <laughs> Oh, like anything on A&E and, &E and the first. 48. Yes, yes, yes. People really like to binge that. And I don't we don't really question it, I guess. It's just we've always been all about the macabre. If you think about it, even mm -hmm. back in the Victorian era and pre Victorian, people would go to public hanging. So there is just something about that. I like to think of it as <clears throat> the train wreck. Like you just have to go look at the train wreck. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. And even for the time that we have had the judicial system, if you will, people have gone and watched those trials and they were written about in detail in the newspaper. So I just think it's part of it. It's part of seeing that train wreck and wanting more details about it. Absolutely. Like why did the conductor fall asleep at the wheel? Exactly. Was he on drugs? Right. Right. So I did not continue true crime into my adulthood. When I was a teenager, I remember reading a true crime novel. And what I discovered through that is that true crime novels are not the media for me. And it really turns me off of true crime for a long time. I think the same reason a lot of people get turned off of true crime, which is just like, wow, the story was super personal and I enjoyed reading about it. And I just wasn't sure it was something I was ready to get into. Now we can fast forward about 20 some odd years and I'm mm -hmm. totally over that. I just know I don't want to <laughs> read novels about it because maybe they're just a little too graphic. And I think that's where I found podcasting to be my favorite way to consume the true crime. Absolutely. I started probably, it's been about two years now. I'm sure people can correct me if I'm wrong. I just know it was pre-COVID. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what really got me back into kind of a true crime binge and being very, or actually really got me into it in general was podcasting, but it was the podcast. I don't know if you've heard about it, but Up and Vanished, but yes. it was season one. Yes, it was so good. The story of Tara Grindstead. And you kind of listen to this podcast and the mystery unfolded, which reminds me of the Hulu. Only murders in the building. <sighs> Only murders in the building. So it reminds good. me of that because it like unfolds as the podcast goes on. And this, the guy who does it is just incredible. And he has an incredible voice. And I just loved listening to every minute of that Tara Grindstead first season. Now I haven't mm -hmm. listened to anymore, but I did listen to his next podcast that immediately followed that, which was Atlanta monster yes. and about the Atlanta child killings of the eighties. And I really liked that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I need more. And I'm sure we'll get into all the more that I discovered through that, but somewhere along the way, I came across my favorite podcast for true crime and maybe my favorite podcast in general, two Monica's in a mic. Oh no, I'm sorry. Um <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you know? That's my favorite podcast too. Right. Oh, but no, it's called dark histories and it's actually about 
not just Victorian crime, but old crime, not a lot of modern crime. And it's a beautiful storytelling of the crimes as if you were reading a novel. And it's by a British dude as a super killer accent. So I'll get more into his stuff later. But really, that's just where we got to where I am now. Um, But for you, it sounds like it picked back up with the pregnancy. It did. It did. So, you know, I watched it with my mom when I was a teenager and then lost track of true crime for a long time until my 20s. And And then all of a sudden I'm dating Paul and I was like, oh, Anne Rule, I need to read the book about Ted Bundy. So I I did that and then I lost track of it again. And then we were married and I got pregnant and I could not sleep for the life of me. So I would just go downstairs and I'd watch A&E, the first 48. And then of course, you know, I had a baby and life is really good and lovely. So no more true crime for me until... I had Logan and then my life got dramatically <laughs> difficult again. Yes. And my, uh, my friend Katie turned me on to crime junkie. Okay. So that is the one where I think you and I cross over mm-hmm. the most crime junkie is one I came across. I don't know. Probably no one told me about it. Um, because I really wasn't sharing with anyone that I was a binging true crime. Right. So, well, so it started that same December, I want to say December, 2018. Okay. Um, with serial, the, the, case of Adnan oh Saeed. yeah which yeah, I so, have not even listened to any of that so it started with that and then I told my friend Katie I'm like hey I just listened to this true crime thing you know it's really good she's like oh have you heard of crime junkie so that's how it started and it really has just snowballed <laughs> yes I think crime junkie turns you into a crime junkie and here in a little bit we'll go deeper into the crime junkie podcast as as we discuss it fully I do have a question though for you before we go on and we share all okay. the podcasts and documentaries and everything that we love and more of a of a list so people can easily find something new to listen to or watch. We're going to get into things that have already been pre-recorded, but I do have a question for you. There okay. seemed to okay. really have been an uptick in the late 90s and then the 2000s and then just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed about kind of live action true crime. So you can think about Lacey P. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it started with OJ personally. Okay. So were you ever invested in any of those or is it more of this already recorded? You know, I think at the time with Lacey Peterson and Jody Arias with those, I didn't have the time because you couldn't consume them audio. right? Right. And I was working. So I wasn't at home sitting around watching the trial. Okay. You know, okay. I do um, think that that makes but I a would, huge I would difference. follow it if it could have been playing on the radio and maybe I didn't search hard enough, but in the two thousands, when it was literally just radio, not right. streaming or anything, I, I probably would have been consuming it then. Well, my mom most definitely recorded the OJ Simpson trial and we still have the VHS tapes. So she'll probably try to deny that, but no mom, (laughs) it's a true story, but (laughs) a true crime story. So here's the flip side. So while I'm working, my mom is, she was working, but she had more time to consume things in the evening. Right. Right. I was going out with friends and she was hooked on the Jody Arias trial. And I don't even know what that is. So, oh my gosh, she killed, she killed her boyfriend. So now I'm ready to get in and share with our friends, all of my, what I would call current obsessions with true crime so that they can go find them. Okay. I think that's a great idea. Okay, Monica, what do you want to start with? Are you going to start with a podcast or TV show? What? I think I'm going to lead up to podcasts, probably because they're my favorite media. But let's start with TV series. What is your current list? You know, the last two or three years, I've kind of been trapped with babies and toddlers. So I haven't had much time to watch TV series. But if I go way back, I'm going to go with the, the OG Dateline. You can't go wrong with Dateline, I don't think. Is it still on? Yes. (laughs) Okay. So people, you can still access Dateline. Now for me, the TV series is one that I've watched more of. I currently watch Homicide Hunter. So Homicide Hunter is about Lieutenant Joe Kenta, and it's just about the cases that he did in Colorado Springs over the eighties and nineties. Just one man, one man. That's amazing. Yeah, it is really great. And I like it because the Lieutenant Joe Kenta character, if you will. I mean, he is a real person, but he's kind of unlike any other. 
other person you've come across and just his persona and the little witty things that he says. And I truly believe they're what he's saying. I don't think they're written for him. I don't think that he's an actor. They make the show. Now the acting, the reenactment style reminds me of the old school Unsolved Mysteries. Yes, it does. It's great. It is great. And so you can access that anywhere. We are going to have links to all of these and just click on the link and that'll show you where to watch. Nobody is paying me to tell you where to watch it. So ha ha. No, um, <laughs> so no it's just, true. It's true. So, um, but it's really great. You would just be shocked at how just in Colorado Springs, how many different types of murders there are over that course of time. And then I often wonder things like this. Is he married? Did he get divorced? Did this man possibly have children anyway? So it will, (laughs) so it will make you think all of those things, but what I really like is it doesn't ever provide any of those answers. So that was for me. Um, what got me into more of watching it on TV was probably a couple of years ago. There was this very interesting series called the killing fields. And of course, they do the thing where they show you the really cool trailer and they Mm -hmm. made you think that it was going to be about all these places across the United States where people dump bodies called killing fields. Oh yeah. But it wasn't. So I mean, it was (laughs) right. So it was supposed to be about that, but I don't know what happened if maybe one of the writers passed away. I don't know because it never went anywhere beyond the first story, but the first story was actually very incredible. It was again about this very interesting detective. Now he has come out of retirement and Mm -hmm. hooked up with this very young and what some may describe as very hot detective. So he literally comes out of retirement. They allow him, they find some money in the budget to let this guy come back on. And he is trying to solve one of his very first cold cases okay. about Eugene Boisfonte. And Zach and I love to say that name. It, and she is, unfortunately- are you pronouncing it that way? It's French, so probably not. But <laughs> Scarlet's like, no. <laughs> no, if you listen to it, though, I mean, it is very close. Eugene is her first name. Am I saying the second part right? I have no idea. Because it's his accent so thick, too. Scarlet. Again, what's really interesting about this particular series is the story of the man. Uh, Now his does get a little bit more personal. You do know that he's been married like six times. Whoa. Yeah. And I don't know if he was good looking when he was younger. It's hard to say, but he has these hypnotic eyes. Um, I, I didn't, I did not find the new detective attractive, but he has his own fan base. And so then I got into unsolved mysteries. It came Mm -hmm. back in 2020 and it actually, there's some really very interesting stories on that. Very interesting. I think that it is worth picking up and I'm sure that we're all familiar with unsolved mysteries. I don't need to go into what that's about. And then forensics files. So as I was binging all these podcasts, I decided I wanted to watch something while I went to bed at night to keep me comfy and cozy. I don't know. Why would you do that before you go to bed? <laughs> uh, why Why do we do that to ourselves, right? But I had to stop watching forensic files because too many people were wrongly accused. And as you know, I get weird and want to internalize things I watch sometimes. And I just kept thinking about the injustice right. and thinking out the pack fact that someone spent five years in jail. And then I do weird things like think about what the, happens in jail. And it just how about goes the people nowhere. who spend 23 years or oh, 30 exactly, years or exactly. 17. Exactly. Or could you imagine spending 30 days when you're innocent? Oh my gosh. It's just awful. Oh, sorry. So I really couldn't go on because then I just kept feeling like I needed to go get my law degree and fight the justice system. So I needed to take it down a notch. And I just started reading before I went to bed. Yeah. So those are good TV series that I think that if you want to watch it with a friend by yourself, if you're looking for things to binge, these are series I think that you can binge, which is the title of this episode. Not like, oh, this is like a good thing or no, this is like, you can watch all of them. You can watch 27 in a row and you're actually not going to get tired of it. Yeah. Well, so you are talking about TV shows. I'm going to talk about docu-series or documentaries. Yes. Because I have none of those on my list. Fantastic. I figured we'd balance each other out again. So the one that got me into the true crime docu-series is probably the one that sparked a lot of this. I forget what year it came out. Making a Murderer. 
on Netflix. <gasps> oh yeah. I can't watch that for the reason I just described. Well, so it's interesting, right? At the end of it, I was convinced he was innocent, mm-hmm. but since then, uh, the the police, uh, the sheriff, they're suing uh, Netflix or the producers Ooh. because they feel like it was so one sided mm, that I it can... led people to Shocking. think that he was innocent. So, <laughs> and I'm just talking about like the main guy, right? Right. Um, right. The, the teenager, I do think he was manipulated and what mm-hmm. happened to him is so wrong and he's out of appeal. So he's in prison for the rest of his life. And I think that's a tragedy. Um, he never should have been questioned without an adult at all. Low IQ. IQ. So making a murderer, the first one came out in 2015, which sounds about right. I don't think I was, I jumped on it right when it came out, maybe a year later. And then the second one came out in 2018, but Stephen Avery, I, you know, now I'm kind of, I go the other way and I think he actually killed the girl. Isn't that um, funny how certain podcast TV series will really make you question yes. what you thought before. And I had that with Lacey Peterson case. Uh Oh, interesting. Definitely. No, I'm should more convinced be an, so that, that we do. Did. Oh, what? Who? Uh, Scott Peterson. No. Oh okay. yeah. He, he totally no. Um, anyway. Um, but you know, I don't think, I don't think he committed his first crime that he was convicted of. And he spent a long time in prison for that. But I do think he committed the second crime. So that's the thing. That's the docuseries that kicked off my true crime, like the second wave of true crime. So Making a Murderer, I was really fascinated by it. And then HBO had a documentary called The Jinx out about the same time about Robert Durst. Right, right. We mentioned that before. So I watched that. And then after that, I watched The Staircase, which is, it's a tragic story. And my mom and I were together watching it while she visited. Um, Initially, you think, okay, this man totally killed his wife, right? He threw her down the stairs. But by the end, you realize he was wrongfully convicted and he was in prison for like 20 years. He spent his life savings defending himself. He ran out of money. And then the lawyer decided to take him on pro bono. And he was finally released on an Alfred plea. And, you know, if you're not a huge true crime buff, you may not know what an Alfred plea is, but basically he had to admit guilt so that the prosecutor could keep the win in their column, but he was released. That shouldn't even be a thing. It shouldn't even be a thing. Why is that a thing? I don't know. It's the worst thing. Again, want to get my law degree and take on the justice system. This is disgusting. Exactly. Because what they ended up finding is that the blood spatter expert basically fabricated everything. Oh my goodness. And then there's just somebody out there who killed his wife who goes unpunished, but, oh, I'm so glad the prosecution gets to keep that check mark in their box. Right. I don't think it should work that way. I don't think there should be a win or loss column with this. It's, did we find the right person? Uh, And Tiger King, okay. Tiger King, (laughs) Tiger King took the world by storm during COVID because what else did anyone have to do? I was actually on a Zoom happy hour to discuss Tiger King. Oh my goodness. That's funny. Well, we watched Tiger King because I thought it was going to be about people who own tigers. Then this guy was from Oklahoma, which was really intriguing to me because the guy who lived next to me was actually from Oklahoma as well, even though I lived in Arkansas. And so I just thought, oh, Zach has got to see this. He's got to see this because he's going to see a little part of my life. I didn't know anything about it. So I asked Brady, who was a freshman in high school at the time, to come join us in watching this. (laughs) And maybe retrospectively, I tell myself I should have previewed that before watching it with my son, Uh, because it was definitely, yeah, we did not know that so many of these tiger palaces, if you will, (laughs) were tied up in weirdness and cults. And our family almost went to the one, which I would call a cult. Do you remember the one where the guy would like have the younger girls? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I almost went to that with my family unbeknownst to us that any of that would be going on because that was in Myrtle beach area. Mm -hmm. And really the reason that I pulled back on going, which is a little shocking to me that I felt this way because I love big cats. I was like, you get to take your picture for $200 with a baby tiger. And I thought, how cool is that? That is the coolest. And then something just stuck with me, which was this, how do they always have a baby tiger? 
Mm. What is going on? I And I just felt a little uneasy about it. Now, also, when we were in Florida, we almost went to see all you cool cats and kittens. Oh, in- her? Yes. Oh, I- my gosh. Several times wanted to make that work out. Now, of course, I didn't know who she was. I wasn't watching anything online. I just knew that she was a big cat sanctuary. And really what kept us from going to that was when you would read the fine print. Well, it wasn't the fine print, but it would say that you couldn't take children under three years old out there because they would be looked at as prey. And it was just very hard to find a way to get out there without having a little three-year-old in my life. So we never made it there, which I just found all of this hilarious as we watched it, because as we watched it, me, Zach and Brady, I'm thinking I'm sharing a part of my childhood with them. Uh But what's happening is the three of us are realizing we were almost participants in some of these things that we were seeing on here. And that these are things that we had pursued as family fun. (laughs) Well, you know, fate intervened. Yes. Oh, thankfully. Seriously. I would be beyond embarrassed if I had actually pulled, gone through with it and gone, especially to the weird cult one. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, so I've also gone down the rabbit hole of darker documentaries and Mm. docuseries like Surviving R. Kelly and Athlete A. Um, The Surviving R. Kelly, it was traumatizing. Mm. Um, it was traumatizing. And thankfully he was just convicted yes. on all accounts of sex trafficking at the end of September. Um, and let's not forget the vow. Hello. Oh, what um, was that? Did, did we ever discuss the vow? We never discussed the vow. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> so I run, I run the gamut. I mean, I, I watch everything from, um, this is a robbery, the greatest art heist in the world, um, to, you know, surviving R. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said, that's why I feel like you're just a little bit more immersed than I am. I mean, we did, we kicked off our podcast with a true crime episode. Honestly, we did. We did. We did. So, and it was, it was nothing I had ever heard of. I mean, I had heard of the cult, but I did not know anything beyond the name of the cult. Is there one that you're watching right now? You know, I've been really obsessed with investigation discovery on Discovery Plus because they have tons. Now, there is one I watch on there and I don't know the name of it, but it's a blonde lady and she goes in and to is all it of Paula Zahn. It might be, it might be. I think so. And she goes into all these really seedy places across the entire world. And she talks to these people, like she talked to some people down in Jamaica about how they would call people in the United States and take all of their life savings. And they would, you know, use these very American accents when they did it. And they felt completely justified in doing it. But then she went to a South American country. I can't remember. I'm not taking notes. I didn't know we were doing a podcast on it. Um, (laughs) and, And that was about counterfeiting. And that was absolutely fascinating. I was so intrigued by that. The fact that what these people go through, which kind of sounds crazy because it's a crime, right? And it's really Mm -hmm. devalues our dollar. Um, But what they go through to counterfeit that and the process that it takes, you know, I'm over here in my mind thinking it's just one factory. No, in order to keep it from being discovered, it takes place. Each part takes place somewhere different. And there really is an art to do doing it. And then what they, so then what they do is they get here in America and they're not bringing, you know, a hundred dollar bill. They're just trying to Mm -hmm. bring twenties. Counterfeiting is fascinating. I guess as far as true crime goes, that's one of the few that I will watch that is, doesn't have to do with murder. And Zach really got me turned on to that because he is super into drug cartels and that kind of stuff, which I, yeah, narcos. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I will not even touch that genre of anything. I want nothing. I, I like to pretend it doesn't exist, which we all know it does, but it is not. I don't want to oh, be part funny. of it. I don't want to be a part of it. Talk to me about serial killers in the Victorian era who do heinous crimes, but do not talk to me about the drug cartel. <laughs> <laughs> You're hilarious. Well, that sounds like the perfect place to stop this part one of True Crime Benches. This week, I hope everyone has a great 
Thanksgiving. Thank you for listening. Uh, We're going to cut this one a little bit short this week, honestly, because we had technical difficulties. And so hopefully here in a couple weeks, we can get you part two. In the meantime, take care. Thanks for joining us and really, really enjoy this week. Thanks so much for letting us be part of your day, whether that's folding socks, driving to work, or getting in your cardio. We're happy to provide you with some entertainment about nothing serious, seriously. For extended show notes, please head over to our website, twomonicaspodcast.com. That's with the number two. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Two Monica's Podcast and find us on Pinterest at Two Monica's Podcast. If you'd like to connect with us directly, email us at Two Monica's Podcast at gmail.com. Awesome. That was fun.